I'm John Buchanan. What we're going to do in this video is to explore track alternatives. And these are really useful if you're still at the kind of composition or writing stage of your project and you're trying out different ideas. Sometimes we're thinking, okay, is the melody this? And then we have another idea for a melody. And rather than creating separate tracks for all of the kind of little sketch pad melodic ideas that we might want to try out, track alternatives can really help us in terms of organizing our ideas and keeping them all under one roof. Let's just have a little uh, listen to the track that we're going to be working with. Okay, now I've got a couple of ideas in mind for this first violin section. At the moment it's doing this kind of little mystery thing, but I'm wondering whether or not a more expansive melody might be a good idea. Now there are a couple of ways that I could do this. The first thing I suppose I could do would be to duplicate this track, but before I do that I need to understand exactly what the kind of load is on my project by making that choice. The samples that I'm using are from the BBC Symphony Orchestra, a sort of sample collection from Spitfire Audio, and the first violin alone playing this one articulation is using 2.63 gigabytes of memory. So if I duplicate this track, I'm adding another 2.63 gigabytes of memory to my project, which might begin to tax my computer, particularly if I keep making the same choice, that for every time I want to create a duplicate of this instrument, I'm effectively, without thinking about it, just adding that amount of load. Now you might be thinking, okay, well I don't own that sample library and that problem wouldn't happen to me. But actually what's interesting is that lots of the sounds that we call on, particularly from the library within Logic, come packed with sounds, effects chains, a whole series of processes that are going on. So every time we press duplicate, we're effectively increasing the kind of memory allocation of the project and we're unnecessarily bogging things down. So another way that I could potentially add a second track in order to try out an alternative idea would be to come to the track options, to come to other, and then what I can do is to create a new track with the same instrument. Now what this does is to keep exactly the same track, so in other words it's the, literally the same track with the same instrument assigned to it, and what I could then do would be to mute this and to record an alternative on this other track. Okay, well that's fine except that it's a little bit messy, if I've got one track called First Violin, what I really want to do, or Violin 1, what I really want to do is to have all of the melodic ideas that I might like to use for that instrument under one roof. So again what I'm going to do is just to delete this track and come back to my main Violin 1 um, track. So instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is to configure a track alternative. And what that literally does is to create this kind of mirrored track using exactly the same instrument, but on the same track lane as the one that I currently have set up. Now to do this, there are a couple of ways I can do it. The easiest way is to hit control and click, and then what I can do is to come to track header components, and right down here at the bottom is track alternatives. Now when I turn this on, it will switch on for every track within my project, not just the one that I've selected, and the only way that I can see that something has changed is that I've got this little up and down arrow now next to each individual track, and when I hover over it you can see it says track alternatives menu. So what is a track alternative? Well, to understand that, let's just dive into this folder for a second. So at the moment what I've got is one track, one first violin part, playing the one region that exists on this track track. But if I want to, I can create a new one. And what will immediately happen is that my first one will vanish. No, don't worry, it's not gone. It's still there and I just need to go and toggle to find it again. If I come back here, I can see that A, the first option, is here and I can click it. Now A and B is not that useful. What I'm going to do is to rename this again by using the drop down menu and I'm just going to call this original. This was my original idea for this melody. And what I'm going to do is come back to B and I'm going to try something else. So let's just play in a, an alternative melody for this part. Okay, so there's a kind of busier melody, and again what I can do would be to maybe quantize it. Um, all kinds of things, all the usual things I can do with MIDI, I'm going to just do to this region. So I've now got this busier alternative. So busier would be quite a good name to call this. I'm going to again rename this, I'm going to sort of rename this alternative, and uh, just select this option here, I'm just going to call it busier. B for busier. 
nice. Okay, so I've now got my original, which is here, and I've got my busier alternative. Okay, well, that's fine. Now, what if I want to be able to see these two things side by side? It could be that what I want to do is to select different things from different um, uh, takes that I've sort of effectively recorded, these different track alternatives. Well, again, I've got the option to do that by clicking here and coming to show inactive. And what this then does is to put the two versions side by side. So here's the original. And if I want to have this at the top, I can click this little button here and they'll change places. And here is the busier alternative. Now, what I can do is to literally just switch between the two by enabling one or the other. And because they're the same track, by enabling one, I automatically mute the other, if that makes sense. Effectively, what we've got is one or the other. So we've got the opportunity to do that. So if I wanted to kind of comp between the two things, what I'd need to do potentially would be to create another track alternative. Let's just do that now. And what I could then do would be to say, OK, I want to create another new one. I'm going to call C, I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to call this my comp, if you like. And what this allows me to do then is to kind of create a track from the bits of the other uh, takes that are available to me. So let's start with the original. Let's suppose that what I want to do is to have, or maybe the busier version, play at the beginning. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the scissors to kind of chop through between the different takes that I've got available to me. I'm going to use this second phrase here. Then I'm going to come back to the busier version. And maybe what I'm going to do is to use the end of my original at the expense of this one here instead. What I could then do would be to say, OK, so I'm going to use this section here. And I'm going to use this one here as well. And I'm going to use um, the end of the uh, original. So that is going to move up to here as well. And then what we'll do is we'll put this in here. Now, it's not the neatest, tidiest system imaginable. But what I've effectively now got is this kind of comp track, which is working here. And what I then need to do is just simply to enable it by switching off the uh, sort of alternative preview for one of the other two track alternatives. And now what I've done is to create this comp track from the best of my two takes. So particularly if you're working with orchestral samples or instruments that have got a big memory load, rather than simply just duplicating and creating multiple versions, getting yourself into trouble from that perspective, track alternatives can be a really useful way of keeping your melodic ideas under one roof. And as you can see, you can kind of mine them for their best ideas and create a kind of comp take in the process.